What's something creepy that has happened to you that you still occasionally think about to this day? Also, please keep supporting us by subscribing our channel Thread Tonic. Part 1 Account 1 when I was around 11, I was at softball practice, and for whatever reason, the practice ended early, so I had to wait at the park for my grandpa to come and pick me up. I ended up having to wait alone for about 30 minutes because I didn't have a cell phone to call and tell my grandpa that practice ended early. I remember sitting on the swings when an adult man, in his 30s or 40s, came and sat down next to me. He asked if he knew me, and I said no, and he told me that I must just have one of those pretty faces that feel recognizable to anybody. I remember feeling happy about the compliment, and I kept talking to him. Eventually, he told me that he had his car with him, and that he could drive me home to my grandparents' house so that they didn't have to worry about picking me up, and I wouldn't have to wait any longer. Being eleven, I didn't think anything of this, and proceeded to get into this stranger's car. Luckily, my grandpa showed up just in time, and I remember seeing his car and jumping out to meet him. The stranger sped off without talking to my grandpa, and that was the last I ever heard about it. This is such a vivid memory for me, and I often find myself thinking about what would have happened to me and what a different person I would be today if my grandpa hadn't shown up when he did. Account 2. Smoking a blunt with the fucker who had raped and murdered a friend of mine the previous evening. We were all hypothesizing what had happened while the psycho who had done it was casually trying to plant disinformation. Cops came for him later that afternoon. Edit. I was somewhat incorrect on the timeline. Cops talked to him later that day, but he wasn't arrested for a few more. Account 3. My friend planned his ex's murder. He hosted a DD game weekly for the five of us. For two weeks, he told us to move our stuff as he was going to do spring cleaning. He forgot to do it the first week, then the second week he did it. The time we gamed after that, he got a call from the cops saying he X was missing, and he told them he didn't know anything about it. They found her car later that same night. The cops checked the security cameras of the area back traced when it showed up, the day she went missing, who got out of the car, and where they went, which was someone of a similar build as him getting into his truck. The cameras showed him dropping off the truck earlier that day before she went missing. That following week, he got swatted. They had 48 hours to search his house and truck. A month later, they used her cell phone pings and his truck GPS to tie it together and found her body. He was arrested. She went missing in late August, and they found her body in late September as well. He has been in jail since then. I think about it daily, having sat across a table from him every week for seven years. He threatened me with a pipe wrench once. I think he used that to kill her. Account 4. Pretty sure I almost got kidnapped when I was a kid. I was ten years old, walking home from school, and an elderly couple driving by stopped and asked me for directions. They were looking for the street I was walking towards, so I pointed them in that direction. Even though my directions were very clear, both were acting confused and asked if I can get in the car and guide them there, and then they would drive me home. I told them it was fine. My house was right here. I lied. They were pressuring, guilting me a lot, and being too nice about wanting to drive me home, it gave me a really weird feeling in my stomach. So I pretended to walk towards a house that wasn't mine, and they drove off. Account 5 Suicide trigger warning. This happened when I was seven. I was walking downtown with my dad who was buying a CD. We used to go to the record store and he'd chat music with the workers and I'd play on the Sega Dreamcast. I remember there was a guy watching me play and it looked like he was crying. He was just kind of staring at me. But because I was seven and had Vidya, I didn't think much of it. About 20 minutes later, there was a bunch of people gathering outside. So we went out to see what the commotion was about. The guy who was crying was now on top of the roof, standing on the ledge. He screamed, this is for you, Daniel, my name, and jumped. My dad put his entire body over mine to prevent me from seeing it. But the guy who jumped died. I thought about it every day for over 20 years. Skip ahead to about five years ago. I'm now at a Christmas staff party, drinking heavily with my team. A guy on said team and I have heart-to-hearts about our pasts. 
and he tells me that he is bisexual. However, he hasn't been with a man in 20 years. He used to date a man behind his girlfriend's back who committed suicide when he wouldn't leave her. Co-worker's name is Daniel. He was in the crowd with me, two strangers forever changed together, but 20 years in the past. This may not be creepy to some, but it haunted me for most of my life. Account 6. When I was 10 years old, I lived in the middle of rural Alabama. We had some odd neighbors, being curious kids. My friend and I followed my neighbor and his son and daughter one day when they left their house and walked into the woods. I was very familiar with the area because it was back when kids could roam free until the streetlights came on. Anyway, we trailed them for about two miles, through the woods, across an old cemetery, and down a railroad. They stopped at a clearing beside the tracks, and my friend and I hid opposite of them and watched. They started digging and kept pulling up bones and putting them in a bucket. We got scared and bolted. I immediately told my parents, but they didn't believe me. I'm 32 and remember that day clearly. Account 7. I moved into a shared house, and my housemate told me half the house had burned down and been rebuilt, and the ghost of the old man who died in the fire visited them. I never had any experience of the old man, but when half asleep I'd very clearly feel a cat or two jump onto my bed, settle down, and purr. It happened often. It was quite chilled out, and I didn't mind. I would hear the distinctive thump of a cat jumping off the bed from time to time, but there was never a physical cat there. Once in that house, but a different bedroom, I had a terrifying lucid dream in which a possum, cat-like hand, claw was coming up from inside of my bed, clawing my thigh. It hurt so much I thought I might be gouging myself in my sleep, but woke up unharmed. Months later I moved out and met the landlord who lived a few doors down to return keys, etc. I said something like, must have been scary when the house burned down, killed the owner. Were they living here at the time? He said, oh no, the owner was fine. He got out, but he had about a dozen cats and several of them died in the fire. I'm pretty sure I was sharing my bed with ghost cats. Not sure what the story was with the dream, but I've had a couple of lucid dreams in my time and they have always been incredibly scary. Account 8. I was camping in the Simpson Desert on a multi-day trip. It was a very remote location. We hadn't planned on stopping at this point, but it was getting late, and one of the trailers had blown a tire, so we decided to repair it, and then call it a day. Being so remote, there aren't any signs for anything, but according to our map, the land we were on was military. Probably for training and stuff. We didn't think much of it at the time, but I dare say we shouldn't have been there. Anyways, it did add to the eerie, remote, and desolate feeling in the area. I remember after dinner we were all stargazing. There were so many meteorites and satellites whizzing around. It was fantastic. I remember watching one satellite move very slowly, much slower than the rest. Then I noticed another. Not far from it moving very slowly in the same direction, I pointed it out to the group, and we were all watching these two slow satellites almost follow each other. Then the first one just made this hard right turn, and we were all like WTH. Then the one behind it did the same thing, and they continued to follow each other before both turning again. It really fucked with me, I couldn't explain it at the time. And it was so bizarre, I have no idea what it was. I'm not one to put much heed into conspiracies or aliens or the like but it fucked with me for sure. The only logical conclusion I can come to, and it does help me sleep a little better at night, is that they were geostationary satellites changing altitudes, orbits. But I'm no space expert. That's the best I have come up with. I have no clue what I saw that night. Account 9. I was probably 11 or 12. There was a telephone pole in our backyard that stood in the middle of our back fence, an electrician was working on it and needed access to our backyard for a couple days. One of the nights, my best friend was over for a sleepover, and we were in the fort we made in my room. I was facing toward her, away from my bedroom door, and she gets startled and let's put kind of a half-hearted scream. Yelp! She said. She thought for a split second she saw a man's face peering between the sheets through the entrance to our fort. 
We both felt really creeped out the rest of the night, but just fell asleep eventually. The next day or so, my family realized that two of our motor scooters we kept in the back were missing. And sometime later, my dad recognized the electrician on Sacramento's Top Ten Wanted. I'm pretty sure that night was the night he stole the scooters. And he must have come inside the house through the back door and left or something when he realized we were awake. Account 10. When I was in third grade, I was home alone with my quadriplegic grandma from after school until my mom came home. One day the phone rings, and I answer it, and an unfamiliar man's voice says, Hey, just one more bite. Did you just get home from school? I say, yeah. Who is this? Instead of answering me, he started asking things like, Do you ever touch yourself? Do you like to look at girls? Being in third grade, of course, I was like, nope, and hung up pretty quick. I told my parents, but nothing ever came of it. I still wonder to this day who it was, how they knew my name and my whereabouts. This was back on a corded landline with no caller ID either. Account 11. I took an Uber at around 11 p.m. to get to my house. Halfway through, he started taking random turns into smaller streets, citing traffic. We weren't even moving towards my destination at this point. I politely asked him to follow the directions that Google was suggesting to which he asked me to shut up. He then ended the trip in the Uber app, but wouldn't stop the car or drop me off. This happened in India, where the police are next to useless. I had pepper spray with me. I'm a guy. My friends used to laugh about how I always carry that thing everywhere. I started spraying at his direction. He crashed the car. I ran out. Here's what I still think about. Uber takes away the SOS option after the driver ends the trip. The driver knows where you live, so even if you take any real action, he could still harm you. The worst part was no one really gave a shit. When I told my parents or my friends, they always find a way to blame me for it. Maybe I was rude to him. Maybe I overreacted. Made me understand what millions of women and men go through after much more serious trauma. Account 12. I can't really remember how old I was, maybe eight or nine years old, but I was walking to school and this older guy, mid-sixties, was going the other direction. I remember thinking he looked weird because it was early so the daylight was fairly dim, but he wore sunglasses. It wasn't cold, but he was wearing a black trench coat. I stepped off the sidewalk to go around him out of arm's distance because even my child brain registered that he wasn't someone I wanted to allow close to me. Turns out I was right. This wacko starts kicking leaves and throwing mulch at me from a nearby garden. I was too freaked out to register what he was shouting, but he was grunting out something. I sprinted for about two blocks before I got to crossing guard in front of my school. I thought about not telling someone, but it kept haunting me for the rest of the day until I finally told my parents, we filed a police report, but I have no idea what happened to him. Account 13. I was about 12 years old and I was playing hide and seek. I was hiding behind a tree, but it was also next to a road. Two guys pulled up in a car and asked if I wanted to see their dog. I said, sure. Then they said it was in the back seat and I would have to go into the car to see it. At that point, I was getting a bad feeling, so I said, never mind. They insisted one more time for me to see it in the back seat, and I said no. Sometimes I wonder where I would be now if I was stupid enough to do it and how terrifyingly easy it is to lure other kids into that situation. Account 14. Okay, here's one. In the late 80s, mom was in the market for a house and finally found one. She met the lady who owned it, signed a contract and all that. And a few days later, the lady was brutally murdered, stabbed repeatedly in the house. I don't know what my mom was thinking. But she went through with the purchase, even though the murderer was still on the loose. My mom and dad had divorced. Then my dad died. But for years, she suspected he must have ordered a hit on her, and they had killed the wrong person. Because he was that type of abusive person who would. Anyway. The bloodstains never fully came off the carpet, and it was just a creepy reminder. The killer was never caught, so it was always kind of creepy living there. The neighbors talked and suspected the husband or some workers who had done some work in the house a few days earlier, since there was no sign of forced entry, but didn't convict anyone. One day, a little after my mom had moved into the house, a teenage boy knocked on the door. My mom asked who it was. 
and he said he was a neighbor and asked if he could borrow a cup of sugar. She didn't open the door, just said she didn't have any, and didn't think anything of it. Anyway, 23 years later, they had opened some cold cases and found the killer, it was that neighbor kid, 15 years old at the time. And he confessed he came into the house by asking the lady to borrow a cup of sugar. If my mom had opened the door, she would have probably been killed too. Account 15. I grew up in a decently rural area, about 40 mins outside a city. One of my neighbors had to call the cops once because someone was back on their property late at night and had started a fire. Cops show up and arrest a man who had murdered his GF and was trying to burn the body. Dumbass pulled off the road thinking he was in the middle of nowhere and was actually only like 50 E from the back porch of one house and in view of multiple. Part 2 Account 1. When I was in elementary school, me brother and friends would ride bikes around our apartment complex, and one time a guy in a station wagon drove up and tried to offer us Halloween candy he had left over. He was kind of weird and kept trying to get us to get closer to pick out what candy we wanted. We felt kind of weirded out by him, but it was, but thought it was just goofy, so we all jokingly ran away yelling, stranger danger like we had seen in videos at school. A couple months later, the same guy pulled up to us asking for directions. We told him we barely know our way around because we are just kids. But he tried so hard to get us to come closer and point on the map where we were. We all did the same thing and ran away jokingly yelling for help. It wasn't until the third time he tried to lure us into his car months later, offering a ride home that we got a little freaked out. He got out of the station wagon this time and said he wanted to put our bikes in his car. We all freaked out and started actually yelling in fear for help and sped towards my friend's door. His mom leaned out the kitchen window to see what happened, and the guy leapt back into his car and burned rubber. Now I'm thinking I need to look up missing children in my hometown during the 90s. Account 2. I used to spend a lot of time walking through the woods, fields by my mom's house, and noticed a path one day that I hadn't seen before. I was listening to music following down this path as the trees around became more dense. You could tell it wasn't often people walk down there anymore. I remember it being more of mud, gravel trail. At this point, I was deep in the woods, hadn't seen another person for a long time, and shaded by the leaves of the trees. I don't know what made me notice at first, but I think I smelt the smoke. I stopped on the path and maybe five meters away to my left in the trees was a small fire that had obviously been stamped out in a hurry, still burning embers and smoke so it had been done only a few moments before, cue me realizing there wasn't anyone around that I'd seen, and that whoever had stamped out the fire was hiding in the trees somewhere, I have never felt a gut feeling to run like I did in that moment. Straight back the way I came, and did not look behind me until I was back into the main woodland with people around. We'll never know if I was paranoid and it was nothing, or if I avoided something bad that day, haha. -ha. Account 3. I had a stalker in college, had to move dorm rooms and building four times in the middle of the night. Friends would help me get to my dorm by pretending we were going to theirs and making sure no one was around when I'd go into mine. He found two of the dorms and left notes in my room. It's been over 11 years and I live in a completely different state, but every once in a while I get the feeling I'm being watched and panic. Account 4. I briefly had a stalker in college as well. I met him on Tinder and went on one really bad date where he told me he had in fact lied about his name and age, and I got freaked out and ended the date. A couple days later, I left my apartment where he picked me up because of some unrelated roommate problems and was living in my car before the university gave me a dorm room. Then a couple days after that, I get a call from one of the aforementioned roommates saying a guy dropped something off for me at 8 a.m. This dude lived in central New Jersey and I went to college in NYC. He made the trip out to give me a well-used hard copy of an album I had mentioned liking, apparently his favorite album from his personal collection, a drawing of us. He gave me disproportionate anime titties. It looked like a 13-year-old boy's idea of a sexy woman, and wrote a long letter, the gist of which was, if I can't have you, no one can. Thankfully, I wasn't in that apartment anymore. But after class that day, I saw him waiting outside my car in the university parking lot, the car where I lived. 
I noped out of there really quickly and told the school, which is why they gave me the room to begin with. He kept texting me and I kept blocking him. He must have made 15 new social media accounts before he got the idea. I'm still scared of ever going to Central Jersey because I'm scared I'll run into him and he'll follow me home. Account 5. My dad never went on vacations with us, workaholic. So every year it was my mom, my two sisters and I. One year we rented a little cabin at Lake of the Ozarks. A storm rolled in one night, and in the flashes of lightning, you could just make out an old lady standing out in the storm watching our little cabin. My mom got more and more freaked out as time passed, and the lady just stood there, hair blowing in the wind, staring at us. Mom finally got the nerve to call out to her. Go away. You don't belong here. But she wouldn't budge. Next morning, the sun comes up and she's still standing there, only it turns out it's a mop draped over a clothesline. Account 6. When I was maybe 10, I was over at a friend's house hanging out. Her neighbor was out of town and my friend was feeding the cat while they were gone. So my friend and I went over to feed the cat. Immediately upon opening the door, we heard someone walking upstairs. They were loud, heavy, slow footsteps like didn't even sound human. My friend and I just looked at each other and sprinted back to her house. The worst part was we told her mom and the mom didn't believe us and made us go back and finish feeding the cat alone. We were terrified but did it. When the neighbor came back, they found that their house had been broken into ETA. Thank you for the awards. I've never gotten any before. As for my friend's mom's reaction, we were in upper end suburbs in the early 2000s. At the time, I think people thought these were incredibly safe with no crime. Not the magnets for robbery they often were. It also probably totally sounded like we thought it was a monster, ghost. At that age, we didn't really understand what it was. But definitely in the future, when my kids are scared, even if it's a monster, I will know better to listen to them. Account 7 I was at an internal work event, party at a fancy hotel in a different state. It was 80s themed. I started talking to some dude. I barely knew anyone there, so I was trying to network. And he tells me he doesn't work for my company. Okay, no worries. I make a joke about free food. He stares me straight in the eye and picks up one of my French fries off my plate. Dips it in ketchup and eats it without saying a word. I kind of freaked out and dropped the food in the trash and just walked out of the room and decide not to think about it. A few minutes later, there he is, staring at me. I change rooms again. I'm short, so I hid behind people and pretended to talk to people I kind of recognized from my home office. He follows me. Every few minutes I see him, I finally got the courage to approach a woman I knew the name of from some meetings, and seeing her around the office. When I asked if the party had any kind of security, she immediately asked if it was about the dude in the blue jacket and white hat. Apparently she'd noticed him staring at me creepily, so I didn't have to try and convince anyone. Security took him away and everyone moved on, but I was scared and paranoid for the rest of the business trip edit. Thank you everyone who has sent kind words and awards. I was just telling my story for my own sake, but I'm glad so many people have seen it, and I feel for everyone who has had similar experiences. To all the people who keep sending me creepy messages, WTF is wrong with you that you read this and that's your response. Seriously, stop. Account 8. My mom used to start at work at like 3 a.m. And she was up at about 2, 2.30 having her coffee. I heard her up and went to see her. She joked that she heard something outside and me being a bit silly opened the blinds up wide as a joke. And there was a guy just standing there staring into the lounge room. That was creepy enough as it is. But what sticks with me is the fact he didn't run or really react for what felt an eternity. While I ran to get my old man and brother, apparently he just stood there and then slowly walked off. Account 9. I was followed home once. I was 23 at the time. I'm female, and I lived a five-minute walk to a busy bar area. I noticed him following me, and I went to a full-out run to get into my building. The guy also ran. But luckily, by the time he got to the entrance to my building, the glass sliding door had shut. Automatic buzz door. The absolutely terrifying part was that as I stood there behind the glass catching my breath, he just stood there staring at me. 
didn't walk away or anything. What in the hell was he planning to do if he caught me? Still gives me the shakes five years later. Account 10. When I was in middle school, my girlfriends and I rode the bus home most days. The bus driver was this older guy who was super nice, fun, and would allow us to play whatever radio station we wanted, and he would drop us girls off at home last so we could dance around on the bus. I remember he would let us stand at the front of the bus while he drove, and he would purposely swerve to make us fall on top of him. I remember thinking it was weird, but it wasn't until I got older that I realized how wrong that all was. I decided to Google his name, I'm now in my 30s, and found that he is a convicted sex offender and is currently incarcerated. Scary part is when I think back, he obviously knew where I lived, and I remember there were several times when he'd drive past my house on the days I wouldn't ride with him. Keep in mind driving past my house was out of the way of his normal route so it was intentional. Account 11. When I was 16, I went to Tampa with a friend. We were staying in a shitty hotel with a pool. That evening, we decided to go take a dip. Everything was fine, it was just us at the pool and a table of adults with a little boy. We were on the opposite side of the pool when the little boy ran over to us and started chatting. It was pretty evident that the kid was lonely and the adults weren't paying any attention to him. Now, this kid was young probably around seven years old. I talked to him because he wanted to talk to me, and I didn't think anything of it. He asked us if we were going to the theme park there. We were and asked how long we'd been in town. Then out of nowhere, he asks us if we like vodka. It kind of hit me as weird, because I'm not sure I even knew what vodka was at age seven. I said, no, we don't drink. He then told us that his parents let him have a few sips of their drinks, and they would let us drink if we went back to their room. This is when I got really creeped out. Me and my friend got the hell out of there and ran back to our rooms. I'm not sure if the kid was just weird, but I kind of felt like the people at the table, kids' parents, were trying to lure us to their room using their child. Very scary. Account 12. Someone broke into my house while I was home alone when I was 19. I found them hiding behind this seven-foot-tall toolbox my dad had in the basement. I was about five feet away and saw their hands. I told them I was going to let them leave out the back door, but I was calling the cops. I locked the basement door and ran upstairs. Watched them run down the street with their shirt pulled up over their head. About a month later, we got back from a trip out of town and we had been robbed. I can't imagine it wasn't the same person. Account 13. When I was little, I was sleeping over at my friend's house. I woke up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom. Dark, far end of the hallway, away from her room. When I stepped out of the bathroom, her older brother was standing outside the door, in the dark. He never said a word, just walked up to me silently and put his hands around my neck. Someone stirred and he dropped his hands. I immediately called my mom and left without even saying anything. Friend never believed me and I never went back. Account 14. I was 18 when I had my first long-term girlfriend. We ended dating on, off for four years. When we first started fooling around, she kind of clammed up and I backed off. On the car ride home, she explained that her last BF was very forceful and that it would take her a while to open up. I, of course, was understanding, and offered comfort and was willing to wait. Things seemed fine for a while, but whenever we'd have trouble, he'd kind of creep back into the picture. Usually through, I'm older now, AOL Messenger, he'd talk to her and then message me threatening me and telling me he was going to get her back. This went on our entire relationship. One time, she called me hysterically, because he'd shown up at her house and grabbed her, kissed her, he was always a huge strain on our relationship, until about the four-year mark, when she called me up really upset and asked if I would come over. She said she had made a big mistake. I was pretty sure she cheated on me and I dreaded it was with this guy. When I get to her house, she explains that this old boyfriend was her the entire time. I was catfishes by my girlfriend for four fucking years. Constantly harassed and threatened in my weakest moments nonetheless. It's been 20 years since then, and it still messes me up when I think back. Account 15. Three friends sleeping over at his house. Two of us were in one room and he was in his own. 
We both woke up to the door conjoining the rooms, creaking open, and we saw him pointing a bow and an arrow at us. Didn't say anything, he just left after a few seconds. We just went back to sleep for some reason, but he denied it in the morning when we confronted him. No more sleepovers with him after. Part 3 Account 1 When I was 13, I was in a bookstore, and a grown ass man approached me in the manga section and started asking me about my love life, if I had a girlfriend, etc. I left and watched the escalator from outside to make sure I wasn't followed. Next thing I know, he's standing next to me and asks me to help him move a couch into his van. I kindly say, fuck no, and he jogs across the street and out of sight. I go inside and tell an adult who responds, yeah, they've been getting complaints like that. Account 2. One time there was this huge snowfall in my town, on Christmas Day, which is weird for us. Anyways, me and brother and sister and sister's boyfriend and a couple others all went tobogganing on this hill at the ball fields. There were also some trees at the park which I climbed and then just let myself fall out of backwards and land in the snow below. Was a great day. Had lots of fun. A while later, I was walking near those trees and the snow had melted down to reveal they were surrounded by rebar stuck into the ground with tape around them to stop people going up to them, I guess. I must have fallen right in between the pieces of rebar. If I had been in just a bit different of a position, I'd have probably been impaled by rebar on Christmas Day, still weird to think about. Account 3. This happened around 2008. One day, I heard the voice of a young Indian man, about 18 to 20 years old, saying, Hello, hello. While I was using my laptop, I had always kept the camera taped over, used virus software, periodically checked the download folders, etc. But when that happened, I freaked out that I'd been hacked and went through every possible safety check again, down to seeing which programs were currently running, whether the neighbors were accessing my Wi-Fi, was it one of those loud pup virus ads, and if my camera or microphone permissions had been turned on, couldn't find a thing. It happened two different times in the year after that. Same man's voice, too. I no longer use that laptop, and I still keep any laptop cameras covered because God knows how that person got a hold of my computer. Account 4. When I was around 13, 14, I was home alone, upstairs, when I heard somebody busting open the kitchen door yelling, Fire, fire, get out! I didn't smell anything, nor did I think that there was that could ignite a fire. I had ordered takeout, and all the things that could set a fire were off, so I decided not to get out and called 911 explaining everything. The police came and found muddy footprints in the kitchen, along with the kitchen door busted. Account 5. When I was around 23 years old, I was on a bike ride and stopped at a park to use the restroom. While I was in the stall, a balding middle, aged man suddenly stuck his head up over the wall and looked down at me. When he saw me looking back up at him, he looked startled like he was expecting to see someone else, and immediately got back down and left. I finished up quickly, because I thought something weird was going on, and I had left my bike sitting unlocked outside the restroom door. When I got back out, my bike was still there, but standing right outside the bathroom door was a 12 4 and 13 year old boy who I'd never seen before who looked right at me and struck up a conversation about my bike. Just pointless small talk. I looked around and saw that the creepy old guy was still milling about in the parking lot, watching us talking. I was barely saying anything, basically just going, yeah, huh, okay. But the kid kept talking to me until the creepy guy gave up and got back in his car and drove off, as soon as the gym's car was out of sight. The kid said something to the effect of, thanks, bye, and then waved and walked away. Account 6. One day during a break between classes in school, I went and dropped off my books in the classroom I was having next before going to hang out or grab something from a vending machine or whatever, and was the first to do so since my last class was really close. Right after I put my books down, I heard an incredibly deep voice say my last name very slowly and clear as day. I have a very unique last name. I doubt I misheard, from above and a little behind me. I figured it was someone messing with me, but the room was completely empty. I did a quick lap and checked anything that direction big enough for someone to hide, and the floating ceilings couldn't support anyone's weight. No idea what it was, 
probably just hearing things that aren't there, but it was a bit creepy. Account 7. Man, this one is a doozy. I saw my abusive ex-stepmother in a grocery store. She immediately rushed over acting like she missed me or wasn't a sadistic prick. She had an old, ugly, greasy man with her. I live in a small town, so I can't exactly blow up at my abuser without being hounded and gossiped about and all that stupid shit. She pulls me in for a hug. I stand still. Then this man, who I had never seen in my entire life, pulls me into a really long, drawn-out hug. He was playing with my hair, telling me how pretty it was, and I think he sniffed it. I did the weird push, a way thing you do when you don't want a hug, and he eventually let go. But the nasty little fucker kept playing with my hair. I was like 13 or 14 and looked like it, so he knew that I was extremely off. Limits. But that didn't stop him. The store we were in has a butcher shop in the back. The nice lady with a large knife invited me to go in the back and see if I could find and point out the meat I had mentioned before. I hadn't mentioned any meat. I was there for a pack of pepperoni. I'd usually avoid going into a secluded area with an unknown woman carrying a butchering knife, but I happily went back with her. I chilled in a corner for like ten minutes while she chopped meat and watched me a bit, and then I decided the coast was clear thanked her, and bolted. I didn't even get my fucking pepperoni, I just wanted out. You can bet your ass I took a long shower with extensive cleaning. Fucking nasty. Recent events have brought that memory up, and I wish I could go back and thank that lady, but I don't know if she'll remember me. I've thought of telling her boss that she saved me from an abusive pedo duo, but I don't want to get her in trouble for letting me into a staff. Only area that probably has health regulations. I'll never forget her, though. Account 8. My brother and I went on a walk in our rural neighborhood when I was 12, 13, and he was 10, 11. We only just turned the corner on our street when a small car with four large men slowed down right beside us. When their car got a bit ahead of us, they sped down the road. It ended in a cul-de-sac, so there was nowhere to go. Either on of the side streets that were dead ends or back to the main, back road, I got a bad feeling about it, so I dragged my brother home he didn't fully understand what was going on and was mad, but my gut told me to run back home. Account 9. Yuck. I had one of my dad's friends message me on Facebook, I was 14F, telling me how he can't stop thinking about me and that he wants to hug me and feel my boobies against his chest. He worked for my uncle and I told my dad ASAP, that man was fired instantly. I feel bad for his wife and children. Wish I could find them and tell them. Account 10. When I was about 10, I was walking around the neighborhood with a few girls that were a couple years older than me, who I did not know very well. They were the neighborhood cool girls in my mind and I was tagging along. After a while, we noticed a car slow down behind us and the driver was staring hard we moved a little faster and he kept pace, so we took off running. It was a huge neighborhood and he was persistent. At one point, he even threw the car in park and started to get out. Thankfully, we were faster. We dipped through shortcuts and ran through yards, but he knew the neighborhood well. To my adrenaline-fueled child's mind, we ran for an eternity. We finally got to one girl's house, but she lived with her grandmother, who had a strict one friend allowed in the house policy apparently regardless of an attempted kidnapping. So two girls went inside, and two other girls and myself had to get to the other side of the neighborhood. We had gotten a couple streets over when we saw him again and took off running. He was alert and still persistent. Just as I was coming to terms with never seeing my family again, one of the other girls waved down a minivan, and it was her mom. She drove me home, and I got grounded for taking a ride with a stranger. My mom still doesn't believe me to this day. Account 11. My dad told me to rake some leaves in our front yard when I was like 12. I ended up working for a few minutes, then felt eyes on me. You know the feeling. I turned around and my neighbor across the street was taking pictures of me. So obviously. Right. When he saw me, he put his phone down and turned around. I immediately ran inside and told my family. None of them believed me. I'm 18 now, and he's still my neighbor, and I have been creeped out ever since. I have to close my window blinds all the time still because I always feel like he's watching me. Account 12. 
When I was a child, I was playing out in the front yard of my house when a white van pulled up on the road. The sliding door opened, and a guy in his early 20s waved at me to go over to him. Luckily, I was a shy kid and got scared and ran inside and told my parents about a strange man in a van calling me over. My parents raced outside, but the van was gone by then, and it is was only as an adult I think back and I realize what a serious situation that was. I could have been abducted that day and worse. Account 13. I was walking to school one day like usual, and this van passed me. Just as I got to the end of my driveway and was about to step onto the road to cross it, I remember two guys in front who were both staring at me. A white van with a blue stripe that ran horizontally around the middle of it. But then they turned the corner and sped off down the road. I was a little unnerved, but crossed the street and went down the same road they'd sped off down. I saw them further down turning the corner up ahead at what was kind of a crossroad. A few minutes later, the van was behind me, and slowing down to match my pace, they'd circled the entire block just to get behind me. I didn't even think. Just reacted on pure instinct and ran for my mate's house a few doors down, praying they hadn't left for school yet. I can still remember running down their driveway and just body, slamming the back of their car in absolute fear. Luckily, they hadn't started reversing yet, they drove me to school, cops got called, as did my mom, and the cops left thinking I was just overly hysterical and that they probably weren't, after me. However, not even a week later, a friend of mine was nearly grabbed from her letterbox two streets away by a van matching the exact same description. For some reason to this day, no one believes that I was possibly about to be kidnapped, despite believing my friend's story. Neither of us had adults who saw the van. Both of us ran for a trusted adult. Yet when she reported it to the cops, they put an alert out. Occasionally, I'll see a van with that exact marking, the same blue stripe, and have to remind myself that it was nearly 30 years ago this happened. Account 14. When I was around eight years old, I lived in a nice, quiet neighborhood and would frequently take walks around the block, sometimes alone, sometimes with my mother. One evening before sunset, my best friend and I decided to go for a walk together. We were about halfway through when we were approached by an older man who was walking with two dogs. He was panting and seemed frantic and asked us if we knew whose dogs they were. We said no and kept walking, trying to get the fuck home as quickly as possible because his presence alone gave us goosebumps. Even though we were walking away quickly, he followed us and asked us to help him find out whose dogs they were to go knocking on all of the neighbor's doors and ask everyone. We continued to say no and picked up our pace, which he then matched and continued following us, shouting, Let's check this house. Help me find their owners. At this point, we sprinted the fuck back to house. He ran behind us for a bit, but tired out really quickly. I have no idea if he was just somewhat socially challenged and didn't understand that two eight-year-old girls are not the people to ask for help or if he was hoping we would knock on that door, which I now suspect was his house, and then push us in and do who knows what, but I'm happy our instincts told us to nope the fuck out of there and go home. Account 15. Used to dispatch, call, take 911 in a moderately sized city, was working overnights once, and we started getting tons of calls about UFO as over the area. It was a weeknight in summer, and lots of people out walking or drinking or whatever were seeing this thing. We probably took 100-ish calls about them for reference. I might handle three or 400 calls myself on a shift, and as the supervisor that rotation, I took over trying to resolve it so everybody could focus on the typical stuff. We had a hot phone to the airport ATC for air emergencies. Got to use that once for a plane crash. That was fucking terrifying and they had absolutely no idea about what was going on and actively resisted getting involved, little while later, got a hold of an FAA hotline, and they definitely had a UFO policy, but were only interested in taking info. They didn't disseminate anything. Talking to them felt like an interrogation, and I left my badge number instead of my name. Eventually got a hold of a duty officer at an Air Force base relatively close by, he told me they were aware of the situation, they were monitoring it, and to consider it a closed issue, whole thing was a trip. 
definitely got vibes like I was an extra in the opening of Independence Day. This was before the days of neighborhood Facebook groups or Yik Yak. The local radio stations had tons of pictures up on their websites for a while afterwards. Part 4 Account 1 when we were house shopping, we went to this big house surrounded by pretty dense landscaping in the front. Bushes mid, thigh, and such. We met our realtor and walked through the house for a solid hour or so, then met on the front porch and talked a bit about what we liked, etc. We had parked near some bushes and the realtor, a petite female, had parked in the driveway. My husband and I got back in the car and continued to chat while the realtor left. Suddenly, about six feet away from the passenger door, a man stood up out of the bushes and walked into the house. He didn't look at us or give any indication he saw us. We called the realtor, who in turn called the owners, who said it was their son, and he doesn't really want us to sell. We ended up not buying that house, and it went off the market shortly after. I still wonder what the hell he was doing, hiding in the bushes, and I'm so glad the realtor had left before us. Account 2 when I was a kid, I came home from school and no one was home, which was normal. Pretty much immediately as I stepped in, the radio started loudly blasting from the speakers we had. I got startled out, so I screamed and ran outside, and after I got back in, it had stopped. How did it start and stop on its own? I still think about it to this day. Count three. I had my school ID written on a piece of paper. It had been a long morning. As I got in my car, it slipped from my pocket. I reached down to grab it, and it blew under my car. I was annoyed, so I said, fuck it, and just left. Hours later, in front of my apartment, which isn't super far from campus, but not super close either, as I was exiting my apartment, I noticed that same piece of paper had blown right in front of my doorway and at my feet. Probably not the creepiest thing in my life, but it was pretty recent and definitely weird. Account 4. I don't tell this story anymore because it sounds fake. In 1996, I was living in a northern Canadian town working on the oil rigs as a low-level laborer. I was 20, just starting out and couch surfing, when a friend offered me a windowless basement room in his mom's house, in an unfinished basement. His mom was on disability and he and his brother sort of ran the house. I set up down there with second-hand mattress, a little TV, and a fan. I had always considered myself a tough guy, partied a lot, fights, stupid macho bullshit like that. So I wasn't a squeamish young man. Well, after a little while living in that room, I started hearing things. Not external groaning or banging or the house shifting or anything like that. What I was hearing was a soft, malevolent chuckling in my ear, like someone whispering laughter, over and over again. I thought I was going crazy. There was a bookshelf in there, and I had a bunch of favorite books I packed around, and they kept falling off the shelf. I'd go up to use the bathroom upstairs and come down. No one had been down there. My books were on the floor. It got so bad, the laughing sound in my ear, that one night I, as a big tough guy, went upstairs and asked my friend if I could sleep on the floor in his room. I remember being surprised because he didn't make fun of me. This was a town where a good time was going to strip club and then beating the shit out of someone outside in the snow. The next day he said, Brent couldn't sleep down there either. He moved out pretty quick. Brent was his cousin, I guy I knew casually, so I went to find him. He was always on gyno row at the strip club on his days off. He looked at me with dead eyes and said, Yeah, man, that room is fucking haunted. I only went back in that room to move my shit out. Ended up sharing a place in a trailer park with another buddy. Account 5. When my friend and I were 17, we used to work in a pizza hut together. We were closing up one weekend, so it was about 11,000 p.m. by the time we shut down and were ready to lock up. When we walked out to her car, there was an old lady sitting in her front passenger seat. My friend opened the driver door and asked the old lady before getting in. Can I help you? The old lady said, I just need a ride home. So we tell her that we just have to go back inside and call our moms to tell her we'll be late. We go back inside the store and lock the door and call the police. Within 10 minutes, the police are there arresting her. Turns out it was actually a 47-year-old man dressed up as an old lady. They found drugs and a knife on his body. Account 6. 
When I was in the early years of secondary school, probably 12-4 Tungtnish, my mom asked me to take a bag of sugar over to my elderly neighbor's house as she'd lent us some sugar the previous weekend. Being a bit bratty, I didn't want to take it as I didn't feel like interacting with anyone. But I took it anyway, stood at my neighbor's front door, timber frame, frosted glass panel in the middle, and knocked, saw her walking down the hallway to the door, and decided that I really didn't feel like chatting, so rude of me. But anyway, so I put the bag of sugar on the doorstep and legged it back to my house. Obviously didn't say anything to my mum about leaving without talking to the neighbor. Three days later, my neighbor pops round to our house and asks if we noticed anything strange around her house in the last couple of days. Naturally, my mum says, Oh, honey, B went and dropped the sugar to you. I thought you'd have spoken then. So I was caught out and had to explain that I'd rudely dropped the sugar and essentially ding, ding, edit, ding, dong, ditched. Neighbor goes on to explain that three days ago, her alarm was triggered and her house was robbed. She had been interstate and forgot to let us know. It wasn't her walking down the hallway to the front door, but the people burgling her home. Sometimes your intuition speaks to you in weird ways. But that day I just did not want to talk to anyone, and I still think about how lucky I am that I bailed when I saw that figure walking down the hallway. Who knows what could have happened? Account 7. I was like 13 at the time, and I was on a trip to D.C. We had stopped, and I went into the public bathroom. It was empty, and I went to the urinal at the complete end of the room. Then, halfway through my piss, this big middle-aged guy who looked like he'd just butchered a group of children walks in and goes to the urinals. There was about a dozen urinals open besides mine, and this dude chooses the one a few over from me. He then glances over at me a few times and then promptly switches over to the stall right next to me. He skipped over two whole urinals just to get the one next to me. Thankfully, I finished right as he did this and I sped right the fuck out of there. I didn't even wash my hands. Pretty sure that was the closest I've ever been to being molested. Account 8. Public bathrooms seem to bring out the worst in people for some reason that I will never understand. I used to work at a gas station and I can't count the number of times I've found shit on the toilet seat, in the urinal, someone left the sink running full blast, found blood on the floor, had someone peek into the stall while I'm in there and make eye contact with me, had the toilet paper stolen, etc. The stall peeking was actually such a problem that the gas station had to install a barrier over the crack between the door and wall because so many fucking idiots would peek through it. Account 9 when I was a kid, maybe 10 or so, I was home by myself. Pretty normal since I was a latchkey kid. I was just hanging out and shooting a cardboard box with one of those cheap airsoft guns you have to rack every time you shoot. I hear a knock at the door and see a bald man through the peephole. It seemed like he was looking through it and saw me. Being a stupid kid that thought adults could get me in trouble, do not teach your kids that. I opened the door. He said he had a leak in his apartment downstairs and came inside to look for a plant or some reason for a leak. I was sketched out, and being a kid, I thought maybe I should shoot him with my dinky little plastic Walther and run. He said something along the lines of, huh, that's weird, turned around to see a little boy with his hand around a pistol grip at his waist. That guy got the hell out of there, nearly spun out on the hardwood. That was the day I either stopped a weirdo from breaking into my apartment, or the day I made my downstairs neighbor think the weird kid upstairs will shoot him. Account 10. In my teens and early 20s, my best friend and I used to have lots of sleepovers. His mom worked the night shift as a nurse, and his little brother usually stayed in his room and went to bed early. So we had the house for ourselves, we'd cook, eat dinner together, watch TV, and especially talk a lot. We also had a tradition that we called a night walks. Always around 11 p.m. or midnight, we'd leave the house and go for a long walk, 2.3 hours. It was especially nice in the summer because the air was warm, but there was a coolish breeze and the fields and pastures smelled amazing. There was one particular route we walked very often towards the end of it, the end. There was a big forest that we had to cross, and when we emerged from it, we were on a hill that overlooked the city. There was a bench, and sometimes we sat down to enjoy the silence. 
the distant lights and to relax a bit before going downhill and home again. One time we did exactly this. Walking through the forest was always a bit scary in the middle of the night. So once we got out, my friend suggested to rest on that bench for a few minutes. We left the trail, walked 20 meters across a meadow, and finally got to the bench. The bench was located in a place where it was surrounded by trees and bushes, except in the front where you had a great view. We sat there for maybe 20, 25 minutes, had a smoke, and just talked about random stuff like space and philosophy. At one point, my friend remarked that he was getting cold because this happened in late fall, October, or November, so we decided to get going and walk home again. When we were almost back to the trail, my friend asked me if I had brought the lighter. I told him that I thought he had picked it up. We turned around and went back to the bench. For a while, we just kind of touched around on the wooden surface but couldn't find it. Since this spot was mostly surrounded by trees, it was very dark. My friend took out his phone and turned on the flashlight. To find the lighter, he waved the flashlight around, and that's when we saw him. There was a guy sitting right behind the bench, like maybe two main a sect. He was completely dressed in black and sat there, motionless, on the cold, wet ground, just staring at us. We hadn't heard any noise, which means he must have sat there for the entire time while we were sitting on the bench, just staring at the back of our heads. That alone is super creepy to think about still today. Of course, my friend and I both got really startled, and my friend said something like, Holy shit, man, you almost gave us a heart attack, haha, what the hell are you doing there? But the guy didn't respond anything. For a while, we just stared at him confused, and he stared back at us. Then I asked, Why are you sitting there on the ground? No response. My friend asked, Um, are you all right? Still no response. It was a really surreal situation, but something about it didn't feel good. I can't say what, but something about that guy gave me a really bad feeling in my stomach. My friend later told me that he had felt the same way. Suddenly, the guy got up and began to walk towards us. I said, uh, what's happening? And now the guy answered, but all he said was, yee as he walked around the bench to come towards us. I felt my friend's hand grab my coat and pull me backwards. He quietly said, Let's get the fuck out of here, man. We walked a few steps backwards because we didn't want to turn our back on the guy. Then we turned around, ran back to the trail, and another 100 meters. When we turned around, we were relieved to see the guy hadn't come after us, but we still walked home as quickly as possible. To this day, I don't know why the hell that guy was sitting there who he was, why he was silently staring at us for almost half an hour, what he planned to do when he got up and walked towards us, etc. All I can say is that my gut feeling tells me it was the right decision to run away rather than wait to find out. Account 11. In my dorm room, I heard the very distinct noise of those slider volume knobs on an iHome, if you know what the term is, help a sister out. As far as I know, this sound is not often or easily replicated by something else. I can't think of anything that makes that sound. I was alone and it happened only once. So I was like, hey, and didn't think anything of it until. The next day I checked my mail and had received a card from a person who previously went to my childhood church. That's a whole different offshoot of creepy. But I digress to provide a bit of context. This individual and I had rarely spoken directly. I had no connection aside from attending the same church years ago a while back for maybe two to three months. Childhood time is a foreign concept. This person was also a registered sex offender. Now for the punchline. The card read, Have things gone bump in the night yet? That's it. That's all it said. What? Account 12. I grew up on a cattle ranch in a once rural town. Our house sat alone in the middle of a 200-acre plot of land, surrounded by a few small neighborhoods and some other small farms. There was a pasture light just outside the yard, visible from the living room, as a kid. Eh, teen. I had a habit of waking up in the middle of the night and randomly walk through the house to check that the windows and doors were closed. It was the 90s in a small town. We didn't always lock our doors. 
It was just a routine thing I did to help me get back to sleep. My dad is the same way. Anyway, when I was about 14, I was doing my checks in the middle of the night, and I look out the window at the pasture light, and there, bathed in blue light, was a lone man. Just standing and staring at the house, I froze for a moment, then ducked down below the windowsill, hoping he didn't see me too. I only waited for a few seconds and peeked out again. But he was gone. I told my dad and he just nonchalantly shrugged it off and said that people will walk across our pastures all the time since we were in between two major roadways. Mostly homeless or locals without cars. You can bet I started making sure the doors were locked as well after that. Account 13. If you knew my sister and I, you'd know how odd this makes us feel. My sister was spending the night at a friend's house. She was around 16, 17 years old. That night, she had an extremely vivid dream of a man breaking into the friend's bedroom window and proceeding to sexually assault her. My sister, she awoke terrified because the dream was so vivid in its details. She proceeded to wake up her friend and tell her about the dream. As she is describing the dream, her friend stops her and proceeded to describe the man in the dream. According to the friend, the bed they were sleeping on was giving second, hand, and every since receiving it, she had been having the exact same dream, needless to say. The parents got rid of the bed and the dream stopped. No matter how much time has passed and how many creepy things I've heard or experienced, this haunts me the most vividly. Account 14. I came home once from school when I was about 15 pow and 16 on a dark Friday night. It was winter at the time, so it started to get dark quite early. I was home alone when I arrived, my parents always got home late from work, and my brother had football practice every Friday after school. First thing I do when I get home is change to my PJs in my bedroom, which is located on the upper floor of the house. My bedroom sits directly above the kitchen. I eventually hear the kitchen door close suddenly, not violently or anything, just normally. In this case, it's the door that leads to the exterior back part of the house and initially did not think anything of it. I knew it was this specific door in question, as it makes quite a distinctive sound. I remember thinking it was either my brother, who had possibly arrived early, or my grandma, who has a tendency to walk into our house and then call for either me and my brother sometimes. Eventually, I started to get weirded out when I couldn't hear anyone moving or saying anything. So I step out of my bedroom and call for both my brother and grandma on the top of the stairs. Nobody answered back and I still couldn't hear anything. Weird? I start to slowly walk downstairs and then stop halfway through, and I'm now facing the steps that lead to the living room. The kitchen is to the left. Suddenly, I start to hear what sounds like heavy breathing, like someone had just run a marathon and was extremely tired. It seemed to be coming from my left, so that meant in the kitchen, I was honestly completely unsure if it was my brain making these noises up in my head, as I was already feeling a little creeped out before I started walking down the stairs. I stood frozen for probably a minute or two just trying to decipher this supposed breathing I could hear. Eventually, it stops being now completely creeped out. I head back upstairs. Genuinely concerned someone was in the house, I grab a random object in my room to use as self-defense, just in case I ended up coming across an intruder. Ridiculously. I think I ended up picking my bedside lamp as a weapon. Can't remember for sure. I somehow gained the courage to go downstairs. Don't ask me how as I'm such a chicken when it comes to creepy situations like this. I check out the living room, toilet, nothing out of the ordinary. I step into the kitchen, nothing either. Nothing that could indicate someone had possibly been there. The only weird thing was that the kitchen door I mentioned was unlocked. My parents and my brother and I usually close both that door and the front door when we leave the house. But clearly someone had forgotten to lock it. The thing is, since it had been left open... I couldn't rule out the possibility that someone might have actually been in the house, even for just a few minutes. It's still something that creeps me out to this day. As I have no explanation for what I heard, Edit, I'm not from the USA, I'm European. Account 15. I had a lot of dreams where I would make sure all the windows and doors were locked. Usually nothing would happen. 
But every now and then I would spot a man across the garden outside the kitchen door. Flimsy door with big window. I'd immediately rush to lock it, but he'd run over in an instant and start pushing the handle down. I would then yell for my mum, and she would save the day and lock the door. LOL. The last time I remember having the dream, I saw the guy outside and didn't bother trying to lock the door. I just yelled for my mum straight away. But he started running over, and my mother didn't come. I got this awful dread as I realized she wasn't coming. Then the door opened, and I woke up, me being a frightened little kid. I went to my mum's room to tell her I had a nightmare. And well, she wasn't there. It was about 2.3 a.m., I think. Feeling of dread came then, lol. Turns out she went out to the garden as she heard cats fighting. No sight of a creepy guy outside. Part 5 Account 1 I live in a very creepy home. I would hear knocking all the time and walking through my wood floors in the kitchen. I lived alone and no animals. One night in particular, I got freaked out so bad. Felt like my heart would jump from my chest. It was around 2 a.m. in the morning. I was fast asleep. I heard a loud bang from somewhere in my home. It was one of those bangs I wasn't sure I was dreaming or not, so I just laid there for a minute, listening intently. My room was located at the very end of the hallway near my bathroom. The hall would meet living room, then wrap around to my kitchen and back room. As I was listening intently, my central air is extremely loud, but I heard, clear as day. Someone run their fingernail down the metal vents that spits out cold air from the unit near my kitchen. It was loud. By that time, I jumped into fight mode immediately. I texted my father and told him there might be an intruder in my home. I pulled out my pistol and flashlight and hugged the wall near my open door and listened. My heart was pounding. I heard small footsteps coming from the kitchen and was absolutely positive someone broke into my home. I gathered my courage and turned into the hall, pointed my pistol at the hallway. Walking down the hallway, there is another room on my left, which is pitch black. I lean my head in there and peek, but nothing. I quietly walked towards my living room and peeked and saw nothing. I turned the corner leading to my kitchen and sweating profusely. I flipped the light on into the kitchen and pointed my gun. Every single cabinet door, oven door was wide open. I yelled, if anyone is in that back room, you better show yourself or be shot. Nothing replied back to me. I made my way into the back room and could hear the creaks on the wood floor from my weight. I jump into the back room to reveal absolutely no one in the house. To this day, I have activity happen, and I just don't have an explanation for. Account 2. About ten years back, I moved into my brother's floor apartment. It was in the hood. But that never stopped me from walking to the corner store at night when I ran out of smokes. It was a five-minute walk at best. I could see the store from my front door, just cross the street, walk a couple minutes, cross a major intersection, and you're there. So I head out as normal. As I got to the store parking lot, there was a man in a car demanding my attention. Man, hey, hey, you girl, hey, come here, come here, hey, come here, come here, hey. At this point, I had already walked past and was seconds from entering the store, and I hear him suddenly yell, I love you. I just cringe a bit, but shake it off and buy my stupid cancer sticks. When I exit the store, he's still there, but something is different. As I'm walking back across the intersection, I notice that dude quickly pulled out the lot in my direction, seemingly pursuing me. I'm thinking, probably just imagining this, but felt it in my gut. I turned to see him at the intersection. He pulled onto the same street that I was suddenly desperately running across. The entrance to my brother's apartment was on a side, frontage road running parallel with the road there. As I made it to the side road, I turned to see that guy was indeed following me, which meant he had to drive for a few seconds and basically make a weird U-turn to get to me. But he didn't know that my destination was the first building there. I was already watching from my front door as he erratically drove down the side road looking for me, angrily swerving all over the place. I was terrified and super lucky that the apartment was so close. If I had lived in the next apartments over, I might not be here today. Now I know better and carry protection and won't go walking at night without my dog. Account 3. Two of us driving together. 
stopped to fill gas late at night. The gas station was closed. Beautiful summer night. I stepped away from the car to take the pup over to a grassy spot since we were stopped. Cute twenty-something girl who was driving with me was filling up the car and standing illuminated by the lights over the pumps. Lone car comes tearing past on the road and suddenly does a screeching turn into the station and stops next to our car, opposite side of the pump. Very large guy, reddish beard, mid to late twenties is already out of the car and halfway between the pumps. Moving toward her when he sees me returning to the car with the dog. He freezes in place, staring at me. There was another guy who looked like his twin, sitting tense behind the wheel of their still-running car and also staring. Neither of them moved a muscle after they saw me. They were not scared, very tense, undecided, maybe. The whole incident happened fast. We both got into our car and drove away. They were 100, planning something unspeakable. Be careful out there, people. Account 4 in my mom's house, the bed that my sister and I shared when we were younger breathes sometimes. It feels as if you are laying your head on someone's chest. For years. I didn't say anything about it because I would experience it mostly when I was alone in the dark. I would try holding my breath to see if it's my imagination. To be fair, I am a huge scaredy cat. Can't even watch horror movies at all, but it would continue to rise and fall. One day I brought it up to my sister and mother and they say they have both felt it, but since it never bothers or tries to scare them, they ignore it. I don't sleep on that bed anymore. I haven't noticed anything else off, but I do hate being alone in my mom's house. Account 5. I was alone by myself on a motorbike in a rural area of Cambodia in 1996, back when the Khmer Rouge were still actively hunting down foreigners and offering bounties to any local villager that could capture one. Me being an America white guy, I thought I was invincible. When I had stopped to enjoy the view for a few minutes, a logging truck had passed right past me. With logs in the back, and when they passed me, I could see a group of men in the cab with their eyes all lit up. Just as they passed me, they slammed on the brakes and came to a complete halt. That's when I started up my motorbike quicker than I've ever done before and flew out of there like a bat out of hell. I looked back and the truck was slowly trying to turn around but couldn't really do it because the road was too narrow, and that's the last I ever saw of them. Account 6. I have a spooky child. She's always talked about ghost friends and how they died. It's usually just a quick mention of them every now and then. But there's one incident I still don't understand. We were living in a rural little town at the time. She was about four. She was playing out front on the patio and I was in the kitchen getting her a snack. I could see her perfectly through the door, until I turned my back to reach in the cabinet. Just as I did, I heard tires squealing and a huge thump. I whipped back around, and she wasn't sitting where I had last seen her. I ran like mad over to the door, and there she was, standing just to the side of the door so I couldn't see her from my previous angle. I looked all around as I was scooping her up. Nothing absolutely nothing was out of the ordinary. I put her down, and she was perfectly calm. Me. I was on an adrenaline overdose. Me. What happened? I heard a crash. Her. There was an accident. Me. Where? I don't see anything. Her. It was a long time ago. Me. I don't. Her. It's okay, Mom. Addie was just showing me how she died. Can I have a snack now? She still says spooky things but nothing at that level since, thank God. Account 7. Had a recurring dream in my late teens and well into my twenties about an older dude that was always wearing military uniforms. Mostly it was an all-white uniform, but sometimes Oliver Brown and at least once camo. He never said anything to me, even if I would try to engage him or ask him questions, just kind of looked at me and smiled. I can recall five different dreams he was in, but there may have been more. Kind of a short, stocky guy, white hair, clean-shaved face, just a calm demeanor. I haven't dreamed of him in over ten years, but I still wonder what the hell that was all about. Account 8. When my grandparents passed away, my family moved into their house to help take care of my uncle, who was slightly special needs, and had lived there his whole life. I got a lot of creepy vibes in that house, and had a lot of nightmares while living there. One evening, 
I had the worst nightmare ever that was super realistic. Towards the end of the dream, I saw the scariest demon smiling at me with the blackest black eyes, or lack of, more like emptiness. Hundreds of razor-sharp teeth curled into a smile, and strange cracked white skin, almost like bone. The demon somehow conveyed to me that he was going to murder me just by smiling at me. This nightmare made me not want to sleep for weeks, out of fear of seeing this thing again. I did not tell my family about this dream. I did not get along with this uncle who we lived with, and I rarely spoke to him unless completely necessary. The next day, after that nightmare, he asked me a question. He said, Hey, do you still have that app on your phone? The app he was referring to was some stupid phone app for reading EMF. I downloaded the app just for shits and giggles a few weeks prior because, as I said, the house was creepy and I tried to see if I could pick up any messages from ghosts or demons in the home. I told him, yeah, I still have it. Why? He said, oh, I was just wondering because last night I saw something standing at my doorway and then proceeded to describe the exact demon from my nightmare. I was so freaked out I don't even think I properly responded to him. I told my family about this, and they agreed that something was in the house. None of us slept well the rest of our time there. Luckily, we didn't live in that house for very long before selling it. I still think about that demon from my dream sometimes, and hope I never encounter that smile again. Also, there's no way my uncle could have known what I dreamt, because like I said, I didn't tell my family about the dream, I fully believe that he saw the same demon in person that I saw in my nightmare. Account 9. My family moved to Indianapolis when I was in second grade. At one point, I was watching TV and a weather alert popped up that showed the radar and different shades of green for the amount of rain and tornado danger areas. I looked outside and the sky was the same fucking shade of green as the weather radar. Subsequent winds shook the hell out of the house and I was convinced a tornado was going to atomize the house. Probably mundane as hell for someone born in Tornado Alley, but creeped the hell out of me. Account 10. For a few years, my family lived in my great-grandma's house. Everyone said it was haunted. Of course, my dad and I didn't believe it. Then one night, I'm walking to the bathroom when I decide to glance out the front door. As you pass by it on the way to the bathroom, I see two red eyes staring back at me. It was pitch black and the eyes were just glowing. I turned around and went back to bed, full bladder be damned. Account 11. So this one time I was out hunting, northern BC, on my own. I'm on my quad going down an old trail and I come to the edge of a pond and I look down and there's a bone. Nothing unusual. Then I look a bit further. Deer skull, no biggie. Well, I keep looking, and there's bone set after bone set. I counted at least 20 separate sets, along with two fresh carcasses. I was in the middle of this boneyard. It's dead silent, and I get this spidey sense that something was watching me. I load my rifle and sit and wait a few minutes, but there's nothing. Seriously, the most eerie feeling... I later found out it was most likely a cougar's kill site, and given them amount of bones, it was big and effective. Account 12. My boyfriend and I were hiking in the sequoias one fall, and we ended up on this quiet trail. There was no one in sight, and after crossing this small stream, we both had this odd, hair tingling feeling at the same time. We felt like something was watching us. Needless to say, we turned around and got the heck out of there when we reached this clearing. We ran into two hunters. They told us they spotted fresh mountain lion tracks by the stream and warned us to avoid that area. Creepiest experience by far. Account 13. I'm a guy, and when I was 11 or 12, I was flying back home after having spent the summer with my dad. I was sitting next to an adult man on the plane. He tried to talk to me now I recognize as flirting, tried to put his hand on my knee and asked me if I wanted to hang out once the plane landed. This was before 911. And my mom was waiting for me right outside the gate so nothing happened beyond the encounter on the plane. Fortunately, still creeps me out to this day, though. Account 14. My family and I stayed in Michigan one year with my aunt and uncle, who lived there for a short time. It was along a bay with no super-close neighbors but rental houses within eyeshot. 
It was a really nice house, but felt off. I wasn't the only one who felt it. My entire family did. The first night, there was a, a rental house that had no visitors that week, according to the landlord. But my mom swore she watched lights flicker on and off several times when she couldn't sleep one night and got up around 2.3 a.m. Another night, my oldest sister was asleep on an inflatable mattress in the guest room my parents were in. My middle sister and I were on two other mattresses right outside the door in the upstairs game room type area. My dad hightailed it out of there and decided to sleep in our RV because he said he felt weird in the house and couldn't relax. Once again, my mom woke up around 2.3 a.m., but because someone was at the side of her bed saying, Mom, 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 over and over again like one of us kids were trying to wake her up. She woke up and said, What? But no one was there. She woke my oldest sister up and asked what she needed. My oldest sister was dead asleep and said she had been all night. She checked on my middle sister and I, and we were also sound asleep. Neither of us had gotten up all night. I think we ended up cutting the trip short and deciding to explore the surrounding town and staying in a hotel instead of staying there another night. My aunt and uncle moved soon after. My family still often references how creepy that house was, but no one has an explanation for what happened. Account 15. I went to BJ's on a weekday night, and when I went to the back of the store to get pork chops, there was a man there. He wasn't looking for anything. It felt like he was waiting for his prey. As I moved closer to the pork chops, he tried to get his cart between me, my cart, and a pallet of boxes to be unloaded. I grabbed what I needed and maneuvered around him as quickly as I could. He looked displeased, not mad just displeased. He proceeded to slowly follow me through the store. I paid and hustled my ass to my car, checking over my should to see if he followed me out and would see my car. I drove a long way home in case I was followed. It seems minor, but God, when your gut hits you like that, you just listen and move. Part 6. Account 1. This is kind of stupid. And I've never been one to believe the theory that we're all living in a simulation. But I was driving to the grocery store and I turned my head to look down a road I usually pass on the way there. And it looked for a split second like a dark void. Kind of like if you clip through the bottom of a video game. I blinked, looked again, and all was normal. Just like if it had buffered and then loaded, I'm sure it was just a trick on my eyes. But maybe it was more, I go a different way to the store now. Account 2. Woke up next to a woman twice my age that I have never met before. I was quite shaken up by it, and she harassed me for a while after. Sadly, male victims of rape don't really exist in most people's minds. When I told friends then, I got a lot of jokes about the scratch on my head. Evidently, I had fallen that night. Again, no recollection. So, of course, the story goes. She clobbered me on the side of the head and had her way with me. I've never gone to shot night at the bar since. Still fucks with me any time I see the woman around. I still work in the service industry. And years later, she sat down at one of my tables. I had to pass it off on someone else. Account 3. Me and a friend from high school were walking through the woods late one night, just talking shit. We were kind of lost, not too far from home, but not quite sure where we were at the same time. All of a sudden... It felt like we had been walking for hours, and almost like we just started walking at the same time. Kind of a bad explanation, but all of a sudden we were back on the trail and like a block from his house, my friend aptly said, Do you ever feel like you just glitch through time sometimes? Or something like that, I was like, yeah. And we parted ways, IDK, shit was eerie. We were probably just tired, but I've never experienced that since LOL. Account 4 once I was walking home from the bar, crossing a local park, got the most law and order SVU fear feeling, no other way to describe it, immediately turned around and proceeded to get shit-faced, waiting for someone to walk me home because I was not going to go back through there alone. Later on, a serial rapist was found to have targeting my neighborhood for years. Saw his picture later and realized I'd met him before. He'd been asking for tips about the neighborhood because he was thinking about moving there after a divorce. Last two attacks before he was finally caught on a security camera or something were on my block. I live first floor. I think about it all the time. 
Not as much for me, but how fucked up it was that he was preying on local women for so long, and there was DNA evidence, just untested and lost, until one woman fought about it. System is messed up, and the world is scary. Account 5 I'll never forget the time I was at my old apartment complex pool with my family and seeing a middle-aged dude get real close and comfortable with a random kid who wasn't much younger than me. I was about 7,8, so the details are a bit fuzzy, but from what I can remember, the man was in the pool with his arm over the kid's shoulder asking him where he lived, where he went to school, how old he was, etc. Just a bunch of really weird personal questions. I didn't think much of it. Then I had just assumed the man was being friendly, but looking back on it, I'm positive that that man was a predator. I can also recall the kid's older sibling leading him away from the man while giving him a disgusted look. Scary shit when you think of what could have happened if the kid's sibling didn't take him away. Account 6. I was in our college library before class started, and I wanted to go to the restroom to fix my hair. I hate when other people are in the restroom, because I'm a shy person. I was walking to the restroom when I barely notice a girl with long black hair and a backpack in front of me walk in, so I was obviously annoyed. She walked in right before me, so I was expecting her to leave the door open for me, but she didn't. When I get to the door right after her, I try and open it, but I can't. She's pushing the door closed. It's not locked. I can see a little bit inside, and so I start laughing because I'm just so shocked as why this stranger is pushing the door closed. I let go after a while and turn around to the whole library, kind of like, am I the only person seeing this? And once the door shuts all the way, I push again, no resistance. I go inside and look behind the door, and she's not there. I assume she's hiding in the stall, so I check them all as well. She is nowhere. I immediately realize it must have been a ghost playing tricks on me. For some reason, I am not scared at all. I stay in the restroom and fix my hair and get out. I was so tempted to ask the school facility for the security footage of me pushing the door to see what it looked like, but I was too scared of their reaction. Account 7. I was walking in a good neighborhood at about 10 p.m. with my pup. Pup is very friendly. There is this light coming from the playground. Meh, whatever, keep walking. My pup notices gets uneasy, keep walking and I hear someone barking. At my dog. Like, what? Anyways, I walk a little faster because my pup is growling and upset. And at this point, I'm creeped out and the light is moving closer to me. Guy comes under the street light and is following me, agitating my dog by barking at him. So I'm like, hey, please stop. He starts crossing the street towards me, and I start walking even faster while my dog is on his hind legs just trying to get to this guy. Like I said before, my pup is very friendly, and I've never seen him act like this. I yell, stop or am going to let go of this leash. He stops coming towards me but walking parallel with me, asking what my name is and talking gibberish. My dog is 80 Alobis, now 120 fully grown, I can barely hold on to him and pull him away. IDK where the dude went. Or what he was doing in a playground kinda late at night. I asked around about the dude. Heard he's a retired deputy that just gets drunk and hangs out in the playground late at night to ward off hobos. Yeah, okay. Account 8. Our neighbor is notoriously known for having frequent fights. So frequent that almost every night you'd hear them screaming their lungs out at each other. One night I was outside minding my own business, and I heard them starting another fight. I rolled my eyes in the first few minutes as it was about the husband being drunk again. Few more minutes pass, they then started throwing stuff around their house. A few more minutes pass, I heard the wife ask a question angrily. You did what? She yelled. Now I just assumed that the husband did something really bad that must have pissed off the wife. Everything beyond that were more inaudible voices so I didn't exactly see the entire picture of their fight. Not until the wife started screaming in fear. She started yelling, get away from me and let me go. I started to become concerned as the screams continued and thought I should call the cops, but apparently someone did it first. So a police car pulled over in front of their house. I assumed it was a noise complaint from another neighbor. When the police came to inspect the fighting and yelling completely stopped, I thought it was over. A few days later, after I came back from school, I saw three police cars in front of their house. 
I saw the man in cuffs and was arrested. At first, I assumed that the wife had reported his husband for domestic violence. As I got into our house, my parents were looking through the window and I asked them what was going on. My mom said that she heard from a fellow neighbor of ours that the man had murdered his wife and chopped her up. I was completely shocked and also creeped out by the news. More so when our local news on the TV had a report about it. The man had apparently hid the body parts in their washer room and covered it powdered soap. It was shocking knowing that I lived next to a psychopath. Although it does make it a good story to tell in a group of friends, but it still creeps the shit out of me. I sometimes would imagine if the guy went on a rampage, it was literally the closest I got to a real-life horror movie. Account 9. Two important notes to make before the creepy instance. 1. We lock our three cats out of our bedroom at night because they get loud, annoying when they want attention, to the point that they wake up our baby. Baby sleeps in her crib in our room. We always do a head, count before bed, to make sure that they're all out of the bedroom to save us from getting back up to kick one out. Two. Once in a while, one of the cats will slip into our bedroom closet in the daytime when we open the door to grab a shirt or something, and they'll get locked in until we hear them scratching crying, banging against the inside of the closet door. Scary event. One night when my spouse and I were in bed and about to fall asleep, we hear something banging against our closet door. I ask him if he did the head, count before coming to bed, and he confirmed that he did and could have sworn all three cats were in the living room. We're both immediately kind of creeped out. My spouse gets out of bed and opens the closet door. Nothing is there. He leaves the bedroom to check the rest of our apartment, and all the cats were curled up together on the living room couch. He returns and checks the closet again, just in case we mysteriously got a rat or something, but there was nothing there. After he came back to bed, we cuddled up and were about to fall asleep again, only to be jolted up by a louder, longer banging against the closet door. At that point, we're both ready to shit ourselves. We both get up and thoroughly search the closet together. There's nothing. I get the baby back to sleep. The banging was so loud it woke her up. We get back to bed practically intertwined because we're creeped out, but we're also so exhausted that we start to fall asleep again. But of course, what happens once again as we're just about to fall asleep? More banging against the closet door. It's a little lighter this time, but now the doorknob is rattling too. Neither my spouse or I move, I whisper to him. Should we just stay in bed and hope for the best? Out of pure exhaustion, he said yes. Despite being scared, I'm still beyond tired. And in my sleepy haze, I look towards our closet and sternly whisper, This needs to stop now. We are tired and we're going to sleep. After that, we fell asleep and there were no more disturbances. There haven't been any major activity since then either. Some occasional odd sounds and concerning shadows out of the corners of our eyes. But nothing major like that night. Account 10. I was working at a gas station graveyard and this dude speaking broken English is wandering around the store and I'm standing there. It gets uncomfortable, like weird tension. He walks around to where you can get to the register. Still quiet, not a word being said. So I pull out my knife knowing this is going to go somewhere bad. Finally, I look at him and he looks at me. He laughs and does a finger gun. Laughs and walks out, I'm convinced he was going to rob me, but sized me up and didn't think he was worth it. Not in a, I'm a badass way, but he was a small, skinny dude, and I was a fat guy with a shaved head, and I had a knife in my hand, IDK, but that messed with me to this day. Also, the time I tear gassed myself, edit chlorine gas. Account 11. I used to take different routes home from work, where I worked third shift as a cashier, stalker, one night on one of the routes home, I thought that I saw the grim reaper in a field. It just stood there, leaning on the scythe and watching me drive slowly past. I was very freaked out. So much so that as soon as I got home, I told my best friend about just in case I died in the near future. A couple of weeks later, I was taking that route home again and fell asleep while driving, ended up dying in a head-on collision with a dump truck after I came out of a week-long coma Induced after 16 hours of surgery to save my limbs and life, my buddy asked me if the route I took home was the same one I saw death on. Freaked me right out, even in a heavily medicated state. 
Account 12. When I was younger, I used to have these dreams where the sky was on fire, but it's the wrong color, and I was always running from something with other people into the mountains. I still have it occasionally. It's weird. I never remember my other dreams really at all, but I remember this one. Account 13. When I was seven and my sister was four, a neighborhood kid who was much older than us, probably around 11 or 12, convinced us to let him suck our toes in our backyard playhouse, claiming that it'd have felt nice and a prevented foot fungus I knew something was off to begin with. But for some reason we went along with it. When I mentioned this to my usually even, tempered dad a couple hours later, he got super ticked off and went outside where the kid was still playing and told him to leave immediately and never return. I was very confused about that day until years later, when I realized that what he did to us was technically molestation, sexual assault. After this dawned on me, it has been difficult to think about without feeling sick to my stomach. Account 14. One time when I was washing dishes, and the way it's set up is when you walk in the door, the kitchen is to the left. So if you're washing dishes, your back is facing the door. So I was washing dishes, and I hear the front door open locks and everything. So I turn of the sink since it thought me dad was home early. I turn around, and I see a tall man with a black suit and a top hat. He was walking into our hallway. I was so scared I didn't know what to do. When he started to walk through the hallway, he kind of disappeared, just like faded away. I couldn't wash the dishes without looking behind me every few seconds. I just felt like he was going to come to me again. So I asked my brother to just hang out in the living room while I finished. Sometimes I feel someone behind me while washing dishes and think about it again. It was a horrible feeling. Account 15. A few years ago, I was wondering about a guy I used to work with who was painfully shy. I was the only person he talked to, outside of his family. Glancing at the clock, I felt guilt that I'd not kept in touch since I left that job. Ten years before. No idea why he came to mind. But when I read the obituaries that day, I saw that he had passed away. His burial was at the exact moment that he came into my mind. Account 1. This will likely get buried, but here goes. It happened five years ago, but I still think about it every day. I came home from work on a Wednesday at the same time as usual, 4.45. I lived in a cul-de-sac that had condos on one side and a nature center parking lot on the other. The parked cars rarely changed except when the NC was busy on weekends. I pulled right in front of my building and parked, super excited about getting that prime spot a black BMW with completely blacked out windows except for the drivers, which had no tint at all, came quickly from the end of the curve and stopped way too close to me, facing opposite me toward the main road. I mean, I could not see any light pass through those windows at all. That's how dark they were. I look over and see a dude looking motionlessly forward, hands at 10 and 2. Early 20s with blonde hair and thick black sunglasses, I decide he's waiting for someone. There is a blonde girl that lives above me that looks his age and start returning some texts. A minute goes by, then two, then three. I look anxiously over at the gate to my right, expecting to see someone come out and meet this guy. I turn off my car because I'm wasting gas and start reading Reddit. Another two minutes pass, and I now see this as a, a potential problem. I've been side, aying him this whole time, and you all, he hasn't fucking moved once in six minutes, no phone calls or texts, no scratching his ear. Then I see the rear of his car shake like someone is in the back seat. Hell no. I dial my partner, who was inside, and thankfully working from home that day during this pre-pandemic time, to see if I could get an escort. As soon as I lifted the phone to my ear, the car bolted from the spot it had held for the past eight minutes. I knew it was a kidnapping attempt. In front of my home, timed with my work schedule, and I don't know that I will ever get over it. Account 2. I was leaving this party in farm country, driving down a dirt road in the middle of a cornfield. I was probably too drunk to drive. I was a fucking moron when young, but I wasn't remotely hallucinating or anything. Anyway, I see this weird-looking guy in the hazy distance. I slow down. He's in the direct mi- Account 3. 
When I was 13, I complimented a girl my age and told her she was pretty, and she was, didn't think anything about it at the time. But after that, she started stalking me, bothering my friends, all that stuff. She gave me the crazy eyes a few times and tried kissing me. Other stuff too, but we can skip that. Eventually, I told her that I appreciated her interest in me. But I wasn't R.L.E. looking for a girlfriend. No offense. I even apologized if I gave her the wrong idea. She freaked out on me, hit my chest a few times, and even shouted, You have no idea who you're fucking with. She wasn't just talking trash. Turns out, I didn't know who I was fucking with. It was a small town and my parents knew her family. My parents also knew that her father had just gotten out of prison following a conviction for murder. They nearly panicked when they found out who I'd pissed off. That incident made me less likely to flirt with girls for a pretty long time. Account 4. Once in preschool, my boyfriend threw a chair at my head and it cut my head a medium amount. It bled a lot. He kept the hair from the chair that tore off of my head in a mint container for three years after that, and we didn't break up until third grade. Sometimes I have nightmares that seem like they may be caused by this situation. According to one of his friends, he's in a mental hospital but don't fucking know anymore. Account 5. I was walking down the street and I heard footsteps running up behind me. I turned around, and a man threw a blanket at my head. I dodged the blanket and ran into the street and turned around, yelling. The man just stood there looking at me, and he had a cord in his hand. I ran to my car and called the cops, but they didn't do anything. The man was homeless and lived in a camp right next to my work, so I basically pass his house every day. I haven't seen his again, but I get really freaked out if I hear someone running up behind me now. Account 6 when I was little, maybe 5,6-ish, my extended family was over and we were outside playing badminton. It was towards the end of the day and starting to get dark and a little bit chilly. I was snuggled up with my mom in a double camping chair and was just chilling and watching my family play. While I was sitting there, I noticed something up the mountain from my backyard. It was a dark, tall figure just peering behind from a tree. It was looking from behind the tree, almost as it were hiding and just taking a peek. I don't remember any significant features, but I still remember that night and everything that was going on, and that I saw this thing peeking from behind the tree, super weird. This was in Washington State, and I've always thought of it as being Bigfoot or something. Account 7. Not too creepy. But when I was a kid, my mom and dad took me to look at this car they wanted to buy. It was an old Bronco. I was in the back seat, and I felt something really weird in my gut. My mom asked me what I thought, and I said, I don't like it, don't get it. And she said, well, too bad, we're getting it. Come to find out the dude who sold it to us stole it, and the police were at our door a few weeks later. Oh, Mao. Account 8. When I was in middle school, my dad's stepmom, Charlotte, really got into ghost hunting. It was before all the TV shows and such. It consisted of going to supposedly haunted places at night, taking pictures with digital cameras and looking at them later. There were stories of her floppy disks being destroyed, her being followed home by spirits, and more. She was full of stories. But some of the pictures were interesting and actually captured something, and it was a fun bonding experience. Anyways, my mom, Charlotte, dad's stepmom, my aunt Crystal, cousin Maria, and myself all went ghost hunting at this supposedly haunted cemetery in my town. It's the oldest in my area and has a lot of stories. This cemetery also used to be next door to an old Catholic orphanage, which had a lot of haunting stories as well. I say used to be because the orphanage was torn down several years ago, so we are walking through the cemetery, taking pictures, reading headstones, discussing the people, and Charlotte is sharing stories about this cemetery. Many of them I am just rolling my eyes as I hear about the spirits being seen and experienced here. Well, Aunt Crystal, Maria, and myself all come to a wall and decide to sit. As we are sitting, my mom and Charlotte stand next to us and start talking. As we are talking, the next thing I know, I am about 5,6 feet out away from that wall, still in my seated position, as well as Maria and my aunt, 
I turned to look thinking that the wall had fallen, and so I jumped. I tried so hard to rationalize it, but the wall was standing. Maria and my aunt start running and screaming. I begin to realize how cold I am and start spinning and holding my butt because it's freezing. As we calm down and talk to Charlotte and my mom, they mention that it all happened in a flash and took them by surprise as well. To this day, I still don't fully know what happened. But my daughter's daycare is in between the cemetery and the ground the orphanage used to occupy, so I pass the cemetery every day and still try to figure it out. Just yesterday, I looked to see if perhaps the wall had fallen by now, thinking that may help explain, but it is still standing straight up. Account 9. We've always had weird things in our house. Small stuff we can't explain. Well, the entrance to our attic is in my room, and it's the only entrance in there. Me and my mom are both night owls and seem to stay up pretty late sometimes. One night I had went to bed early but woke up to the sound of three claps coming from our attic at 3 a.m. I told my parents about this in the morning, and they just kind of laughed and shrugged it off, didn't really believe me. Next night comes around and my mom was awake when it happened again, three claps at 3 a.m. It woke me up that night too, but... Paranormal things like that, I typically just shrug off if it keeps happening. Kind of telling whatever it is that I don't care, really. Just don't hurt me. LOL, so I ended up going right back to sleep. My mom told me she heard it too the second night and believed me then. We store all of our holiday things up there, so I'm in the attic fairly often. Nobody is living up there. To this day, we talk about it and still can't explain it. It never happened other than those two nights and nothing else has happened since then. Maybe it was telling us goodbye or something, I don't know. Account 10. When I was about 9 or 10 years old, my grandma took me to my cousin's Saturday football game. I left my Game Boy in the truck and asked her to come with me to get it. She told me no and that I would be fine to get it myself. I said okay and walked to the parking lot. I grabbed my Game Boy from the truck. And as soon as I closed the door to the truck and turned around, there was a tall, middle-aged man standing about 20 feet from me, staring at me. I looked at him for a few seconds, and then he raised his right hand and started shaking his pointer finger side to side in the no, no, no fashion while he shook his head and clicked his tongue. After he did that, he lunged and started chasing me. I weaved in and out of cars until I found an opening in the fence that lined the parking lot. I ran back to the game and told my grandma while hysterically crying. Her and a few football dads went to the parking lot and couldn't find the man. I don't even want to wonder what would have happened to me if that man caught me. I still think about it, unfortunately. Account 11. Lots of weird things have always happened to me. I always attract animals, doesn't seem to matter what I'm doing. I always seem to end up with a friend. It ranges from dogs and cats to bees. I am a particular favorite with them, which is great as I adore them, and love rescuing them and helping them recover, and spiders. Lately, though, it's been birds, which is a new one for me. My family and friends tease me for being a witch. Right from when I was a little kid and there'd be an animal or two tagging behind me on the way home from school, I also pick up on other people's energy really easily. Went to a house to help a woman who was injured with her personal cares. Really lovely lady, but any time I went anywhere near her, I got really dizzy and my head was filled with static. I found out later that she has really severe schizophrenia. I lived with my in-laws for a year while our son was quite young. Their house was built in the early 1900s and definitely had more than a couple of ghosts. They were mostly very friendly, just a little bit naughty. They'd hide things from me, which I would spend ages looking for. After a while, I'd scold them and tell them to put the item back. When I'd turn around, what I'd been looking for would be there. They'd do things like lock you out of the house if you went outside, or sometimes just hit some keys on the piano over and over. There was one soul in there that wasn't nice, though. I'd always know when he was around as the great big goofy golden retriever would refuse to come in the house and just bark and growl, and his whole body would be trembling. My son would get upset about the scary mean man in his room and refuse to sleep in there. My mother-in-law would see and hear them too. And to this day, anytime I stay there, there's normally some kind of interaction with them. Account 12. 
A couple years ago, I, F-27, then 24, stopped at a gas station to use the restroom and was walking the aisles looking for a snack when I noticed a man in the aisle looking at me. I wandered into the next aisle to avoid him, on to look up and see he'd followed me and was still intently watching me. When I moved aisles and it happened again, I was really spooked. I dropped everything I had picked up and booked it to my car, which was parked out front. As I hastily drove away, I called my husband, then boyfriend, and told him about it because I was a little freaked out. Got home and later that night had someone was kidnapped from that area letter that day. Account 13. When I was around 12 years old, I was walking back towards my school from a tennis lesson. A senior pulled up in his red car, offering me a lift. He asked a bunch of questions like what my parents did for work, how old they were, if I had any siblings, that kind of thing. Looking back, he was trying to familiarize himself with me. And I know straight up what would have happened if I got into that car. He wasn't forceful. He didn't try to get out of his car. He could have very well been a nice, sincere man for all I knew, just trying to help someone. But I'm glad that I didn't run that risk. Account 14. About a decade ago, my boyfriend, now husband, and I went up the California coast to a secluded hotel. It was forest meets the ocean, 20 minutes down a two-lane, curvy highway. The resort was on one end of the road, and a small hike to a meditation maze was on the other. We settled into our room and noticed they left a flashlight advising to bring on the hike. We run across the highway and make it into the forest where a small creek was the only thing making sound. We walk over the small stones and begin our meditation maze from the center, left, right, turn. Going in circles and the sun is getting so low, we will definitely need the flashlight to get back at this point. But continue looking down and following the path the small stones made. I break through the circle and whispered into my boyfriend's ear, leave. As soon as we were away from the maze, I let him know I had peeked up during the maze because I saw a bag. Looked higher up and saw a man in the trees watching us. I've been to this hotel a couple times before, even had something else creepy happen there, but this was my last stay. Account 15. When I was 12, I'm 35 now, my mom worked until 11 p.m., and my sister who was 15 was constantly with friends. I had just made some new friends from school that lived about 2.5 miles away on this particular day. I had taken the bus to their neighborhood and hung out most of the night since it beat sitting at home alone, since my sister typically hung with her friends most of the night, too. Around 9 p.m., I started walking home. The route home was on a main street, so I didn't get a chance to stop to use the bathroom, and by the time I got home, I had to go bad. When I walked into my house, all the lights were off, which was pretty typical. I walked up the stairs, and my bedroom light was the only light on in the entire house. Weird, but I had to pee bad, so I didn't think too deep into it. As I got up the stairs, I had to walk past my bedroom to get to the bathroom. There, I saw my sister standing in my room, staring out of the window, wearing my white and orange polo shirt. This was weird for a few reasons. One, she never wore my clothes before. Two. The window was just an ally and my neighbor's house. What would she have been staring at? But having to pee so bad and being in the moment, I didn't consider any of this. As I was in the bathroom peeing, I was yelling at her, Don't wear my fucking clothes anymore. No reply. I go back in my room looking to argue and she was gone. No one was there. At that point, it became very clear that I was alone in the dark in the house. At that point, I ran as fast as I could downstairs and to my next-door neighbor's house and asked if I could stay there for an hour until my mom got home. When I got in their house, I asked to use the phone and called my sister's best friend's house. This was the late 90s, and asked if I could talk to her. Sure enough, she gets on the phone and was there all night. This haunts me to this day. So many questions. Why? Why my shirt? Why my sister? Why that day? 